Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, welcome <laughs> oh. to Drinking Bros. Drinking wow. Bros. kids. Man, I am. I Where am, we drink uh, a lot. We're, we're, we are drinking a lot. We got a new sponsor. I drank a lot last week. Did you get fucked up? Every day. <laughs> Are we allowed to For say eight, where you were last week? Eight days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no secret. I mean, there's a Fox News special coming out about it. No shit. Yeah. Right, fire away. Tell the, tell the audience, because I was pretty stunned myself. You are one of those people who show up around the world with different celebrities, and every time I'm stunned. But this one, I was like, wait, what? It was like nine celebrities in a row of all <laughs> complete different backgrounds. Oh, man. Yeah, the list is long. My friends. Yeah, like, re- read it off to I, the audience. Who are you with I last flew, week? and again, like, uh, you know, Tim Montana is a lot like me. Like, he, he gives you very little information uh-huh. and just kind of says, hey, show up here uh, on this date. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So uh, I flew into Nashville early morning, like 7 a.m. I got in at 9. Um I Ubered to his house. As soon as I got out of the Uber, I literally got into his uh, his suburban, mm-hmm. and we drive to a hotel in downtown Nashville and pick up Charlie Sheen, which is me, Tim Montana, and Charlie Sheen. Now. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there, Charlie Sheen, um, <laughs> because you wrote a song. Whoa! Where the main... We just, we just, we just don't, you know... Of course. Just, we, was... I mean, just think about that. That was that, actually you know? a bridge at the end of the song. Three and a half courses. years ago, sure. we never thought that we would be <laughs> sitting near Charlie Sheen. What are the uh, chances of that? I know. It's like, ugh. I mean... And trust me, some of the Drinking Bros fans were not were not at all forgiving or polite when I posted that picture. It's I had really funny though. Um, few, it is, but it's also kind of like, all right, guys, like now he's kind of in our fold. Like, let's take it a little easy. Because <laughs> <laughs> he be was drinking actually, bros. he was one of the great, like, like one of the nicest people that I've I've met yet. You know? Yeah, that's he, what everybody says. He's like the nicest tr- dude ever. Truly engaging, like, like. <laughs> He he still doesn't believe that like his movies have that the magnitude of of what they have on our generation. Oh yeah, like U.S. Navy SEALs, Hot Shots, like yeah. all like eight like, men out, dude. Uh, you know, Men at Work. Like uh, he was surprised. He was like, "You saw Men at Work?" I was like, "I watched Men at Work like thirty times." Same dude. I loved it. Did you tell me you had Keith David in the movie? Emilio. Yeah, yeah yes. I did. I did because he was like, "Oh, oh, I work, I work with Keith David once." <laughs> <laughs> I think wasn't Keith David in Platoon too? Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yep. yeah I just yeah, watched yeah. that on the plane when we were coming back from Austin, actually. And there was because he was also surprised. Um, I told him, you know, you know, we're, I was like, we're good friends with Dale Dye. And I was like, you know, he has amazing things to say about you and Johnny Depp. And I remember that you, yes. you put out yep. in the basic training. He's like, oh, man, really? He said that? <laughs> He'd be a, dude, that Charlie Sheen would be a great interview because um, he's look, he's a real motherfucker. He'll sit down he's and tell fun. you everything. Yeah. And he and, he, you know, he's not PC. No, like, I mean. Not we at were, all. He was going, you know, we were talking about some fun things in the car and, you know, he's like, oh, fuck that. Fuck them. Like, yeah. Like, and I'm like, okay, this dude's cool. Like, yeah, he's, he's, he's fucking rad. Well, Charlie's worth a bajillion dollars. He is. Yes. And well, is it a bajillion? Is it a bajillion? It's close. He was getting a million for uh, per episode on two and a half men for a very, very, very long time. And then that last show he did also came in. At 100 episodes, right? Yeah. Anger uh, management. It, Dude. They, yeah, they were doing this thing for a while, Jared, where they were picking up 10 episodes. If the ratings did well on FX, then they would pick up 90. So Holy he, shit. Yeah, so he did that as well right afterwards. Um, you know. But, like, you know, we went directly to CMT headquarters, and we did uh, a couple CMT shows, like uh-huh. what, uh, Tim and Charlie did. Um, and it's just, dude, he was he was polite to every piece of the crew, you know, after they're done, he walked up to the first AD. He's like, man, you know, you did a really, you did a, a great job, you know, feeding us what we needed to do. And we, you know, we were able to, to do it. And, and like the dude's just in shock. Like, 
this guy's thanking me right now for <laughs> yeah yeah for for being for for doing my job and being awesome now for, for the audience because we know this i don't know if the audience does charlie sheen directed tim montana's new video right yeah and the video debuts uh in the next week i think i'm gonna have to ask him it might be november it might, it might be the beginning of november i have to ask but awesome. we'll, a... we'll share it on the drinking bros podcast page yeah yeah, yeah. uh and <laughs> Charlie, uh, it, you know, he, he had heard the song that Tim wrote and for whatever reason, Charlie connected with it and was like, you know, I've never directed a music video. And he surprised Tim by bringing the red convertible from Navy SEALs to be in the video. No way. That's the one that got yeah. towed and he drove off the back of the truck. Right? Yes. Yes. Does he own that car in real life? <laughs> yes. That is his car. That is fucking great. He man, he used to have a bunch of cool shit too with like uh, baseball players. Um, he loves baseball. Loves loves, loves it, baseball. Yeah. Um, and he had all this crazy memorabilia uh, that he was selling at like the most rare. <laughs> he had Babe Ruth's bones, I believe. Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, and he a he shin like, shin bone a shin bone. Ruth. Yeah, and he yeah. he puts it on his shin, yep. tapes it on there, and then goes to the batting cage like yeah. every weekend. <laughs> every weekend he does that. Yeah, it's every... really I, I don't know what he gets out of it, but whatever it is, it's making him happy. That's, ah, look, that's what matters. He's uh, hitting hitting line drives every every ball. Yeah. Every ball. Uh, who else was there with you, Jared? Because this we we didn't just well, stop at hey, ten months. Ross, Montana you're going to like Sheen. this. He said he said that uh, that there is a script for Major League Two, and well, Major and League Two came out thirty years ago, or, or uh, another no, Major no League. another one, another one, yes, a third I, one, yeah. So no, that would that be a fourth one because there was a Major League Three that was in the minor leagues, and it was Scott Bakula. Yeah, but that look, they're, they're it was terrible. It was terrible. Like, and they, they sell these off for DVD rights. But I know what you're talking about with the original cast. I actually know yeah. about this. Well, and they got to do it before Bob Euchre dies. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so no, for real, he's old as shit. Charlie loved, loved, loved Major League. So all over town, man, I would say probably for the better part of the last five years, he has been shopping this script and then even looking for independent money to shoot Major League with the old cast back. How much uh -huh. money does he need to do it? Man, I, shooting a baseball movie is expensive. It's, it's a minimum of 25. You could, you know, you could get away with it at 30, I think. You know, you, you take a movie like uh, uh, The Rookie with, like, Dennis Quaid. I think that was a $30 million budget, yeah. 35. So. Well, they, they rented out Tampa Bay's yeah. stadium so I, for, like, three days. And it's extras, man. And to filled fill up, it with 40,000 extras. Yes. Like, so, like, to, to, it's the extras that cost a lot because you got to feed them, house them, close them, all that other shit, and pay them. And it's, like, some are there for free, some are what's on union. Sc what's scale per day now? For uh, an extra, like a union extra, it's probably about, like it's 150. About like, yeah, 195. Oh, there. fuck that. 30,000 of those motherfuckers in one day? Bro. No way. No. Uh, Just no. the logistics behind paying them, not even that money, but the logistics behind paying them probably adds 40 to 60% to that cost. Parking. So you, you always got to pay for damn. parking. Well, and in Tampa Bay, that's easy. Permits. Yeah. No one wants to go there. Obviously. <laughs> no one's going to their fucking playoff game. So. Uh, yeah. And who, who else were you with, Jared? Uh, we had Travis Pastrana. Yep. You know, he seems to be a, a fan fave. Yep. Um, which Tim and Travis together, that's they are both like, you know, I, I think I'm a heavy drinker like those two. Those two can go. Really? So it's like to keep who, who up, wins in that battle. You know what? It's a toss up. No uh, shit. Yeah, because they go, you know, Tim's trained and so is Travis. Yeah. Like Tim's a traveling musician. Yes. And he's a traveling musician that goes hard. And uh, Travis um, is an athlete had, that is, has broken everything in his body, and he's drinking the pain away. So, yeah. Rob O'Neill. Yeah. Uh, which <laughs> Rob O'Neill can fucking drink, too. That asshole so, almost yeah, blacked me out. So at drink. 1 o'clock in the morning, we are in a back alleyway uh -huh. of Broadway. Like, in a no-shit alleyway. Like, water's dripping down. Like, everything. Like <laughs> There's a waitress delivering us. Just, you know, just a full plate after plate of uh, vodka sodas. And we're just like, everybody's just taking like two down, putting it on the tray, and she'd come back with a fresh one. Oof. And Rob is telling the story to, uh, to everybody that hasn't heard it in person. You know, obviously we've heard it before when he's yeah, on the show. And killing like Bin Laden, like, yeah. P Pastrana hadn't heard it and things like that. And it's just like, you know, he tapped me. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> like, this is one of those moments where it's like, no one will ever believe that this that this happened. And then me and Travis went back to 
<laughs> Rob's house, uh, his new house in Nashville, which mm-hmm. is huge. I got lost in it. And like um, he was showing us his cool toilet and like Travis sat down and tried it out. Uh, well, Nashville is like, yeah, Nashville is one of those few cities <laughs> where you can you can still get land. Uh, Hollywood hasn't completely invaded it yet. And yeah. you can get a great house for, you know, a decent price there. <laughs> yeah, his house was awesome. So we we went back there and then uh, there's somebody else with us. Who am I forgetting? But they oh, it was a stripper. Josh, uh, have you guys met stripper? Yeah, you know, stripper Josh. I, do I? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was the remember when we were in Vegas for the jump and like the prettiest dude of Nitro Circus tattoo with blue eyes. that oh, got yeah. us into the, yeah, the yeah, pool. Yeah. yeah. So stripper Josh was there. Oh, gotcha. And right. uh, and uh, <laughs> like. I get woken up because because we're supposed to go to this charity event like, I, you know, Tim's supposed to be there the first shoot and Travis is shooting on the first shoot at 730 in the morning. So like Tim did not leave with us. He went home and he was like, OK, I'll leave the bus on so you guys can sleep on the bus. So like at six, me, stripper Josh and Travis take an Uber to Tim's house and we just quietly go and get in the bunks on the bus and then. You hear like Tim outside. He's like, I don't know where they are. They never came home. And then he like comes in and we're all there. He's like, what the fuck? No <laughs> so way. He gets, a, he gets in the bus and drives the bus to the charity event. And Travis goes and shoots. Uh, and then the whole thing kicks off. Did you guys shower uh, or anything? Or were you, were, was it just, hey, man, we're on the fucking tour bus. And then I mean, I when I woke up, I showered on the tour bus. I mean, it's a tour bus. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I jumped in and fucking got a shower and. Came out all fresh at about, you know, <laughs> an early, early to mid 11. Did yeah. You, did you, uh, <laughs> almost a nooner? Did almost you, a nooner. Yeah. did you condition your hair? Uh, I washed it. I only had shampoo, mm. so I had to use it for everything. I've been using conditioner oh. lately. Yeah. Mostly on my pubes because yeah. they were getting too coarse. You got Well, you've got to. Yeah. Obviously. But now they're soft. I, I feel like I could almost put relaxer in them now and straighten them. Yeah. Give it a go. Like I'm getting close. Give it a go. So, I, I, I'm proud of you, Jared, because usually you don't use shampoo. Usually you just use body wash. So I just, that's actually you know, a step to- up. Toothpaste. It's just toothpaste all over. Yeah. That's a step up for you. <laughs> so you use shampoo. So then me and me and Travis shot the, the trap round, which is uh, like 14 rounds. It's almost like golf. So you, you're in golf carts, you go to a, a station, you do skeet, uh, yep. shoot, and then go to the next station with your team. And I'm just, I was doing horrible because, you know, I'm still hung over shit and like feeling like garbage. So, you know, shooting a shotgun for four hours isn't exactly great for, for that situation. Yeah, not at all. But I still just kept claiming to be beating Travis, even though he won out of the whole team, like. Again, like you talk about somebody that's good at everything that he does. Like <laughs> <laughs> he had never done this before and like scored. Uh, I, I want to say a, it, it was 100 rounds. He got 75. And beat ah, well, he's team. that guy that does like on the go. Guerri- like he would probably be a great sniper because he does gorilla math in his head really easily, easily. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> for that for that jump in uh, in Phoenix for night for World Two. He was just yeah, like or, uh, action figures. action figures who yeah he he jumped and he was like uh, okay with the bike on it it's this much more weight we're gonna need to be going this many miles per hour and Jared told me the story I'm like there's no fucking way it's like yeah he hit it on the first try I'm like god damn it dude Man. can you imagine being that good at something <laughs> yeah yeah I can <laughs> I can I'm pretty much so then a lot of things although like he's drunk enough most of the time that you can do what you did and gaslight him into believing you're beating him. Yeah, <laughs> like you could well, that fucking was the totally thing, get away with that. Any time the cameras came around us for Fox or anybody, I'm like, yeah. So I'm still beating Travis, and he'd be like, hey, no, you're not. <laughs> like, come running back. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I was just, I was just lying. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it was easier than being good at it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it's always easier to lie. Always. Um. So then we go back. Uh, they've got an open bar. Uh, of, of, of course they do. Tim Montana, you know, two bar girls. Yeah. Obviously, the first words out of my mouth were, guess who's single? Yeah. How'd that work out? <laughs> Great. Did it really? Jen, he's Jen, yeah. one of these ladies. I, I, you know, I was hanging out with one for a few days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why yeah. all of a sudden you're fucking pulling punches and being coy? Get yeah. fucked ass. Well, what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened, Jerry? Well, there's more to this night. 
We Tim Montana plays a full show. We get up. Uh, I get up to sing a song with him, and it turns into an eight-minute mashup to where they were playing just the whole band was playing these chords and it turned into me and Tim drunk singing different songs to these chords in in the same time without like a gap so we're almost like challenging each other for somebody to choke up yeah how many people are are, are watching this at this point uh, there's a few hundred but i mean it was thin, it was thinning out you yeah. know because it was a tuesday night sure <laughs> sure uh, and then so the next so so we we drink our asses off that night we get on the bus because there was a bus driver so now like we're pretty much living the band life at this point uh -huh. we get on the we we sleep in the bunks which i'm the opposite of uh of claustrophobic like those those bus bunks were like the greatest thing in the world yeah you like small spaces like, yeah, and yeah. they have like their own AC vents and like yep. a charger for your phone i was like the most comfortable is I've there anywhere to put your dick uh, if you have somebody in there with no, you. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, did like, you fuck on that bus? No. Okay. <laughs> that would have been legendary. Yeah. So we drive back to Tim's house. Everybody's raging. Um, I pass out on his couch in the garage, which is set up like a studio uh -huh. with, with double fisting white claws. So I woke up and I dumped white claw all over myself. Because I just went to sleep with two white claws in my Hey, hands. beauty of that doesn't leave a stain. <laughs> no, you know? not at all. No stains. No. Uh, like which seltzer. is good because I was out of clothes, so I just had to kind of shake it off. <laughs> I, just had to, I just had to Taylor Swift it, you know? Uh, so Tim comes, like, burning through the garage door at about 10 with Travis. So Travis had slept on the bus, I guess. I don't even know. I just I kind of came to, and Tim's just like, Hey, Michael Ray's on his way over, who's a big country star, a big pop country star. He's like, and we're going, we're going to Kid Rock's house. What? And I was like, okay. Well, okay. And I was like, and I was texting Jason Rao from Breaking Benjamin because he lives in Nashville. I was uh -huh. like, come over and hang out. I was like, can Jason come with us? He's like, fuck yeah. So Jason pulls up into the driveway. All of us jump into Michael's Jeep and we drive to Kid Rock's house. Fuck. So is he, he fully lives there in Nashville, Kid Rock. Uh, well, he's he's in the process of leaving Michigan. Okay, gotcha, um, gotcha. And but this is like his be all end all compound. It's really rad. Like we got to see the house that he's building up on his hill. He built a church. There's a bar in it. A church. Like, why, Kid why Rock's got a church. Not? Yeah, he's like, why the fuck not? Oh, that's great. <laughs> Uh, does he, he's got a let let me ask you: Does he own the original General Lee? Is that true? Yes. Oh, absolutely. It is true. From Wait, Duke's Hazard. There's a picture of us in front of it. I know, but it looked. I didn't know if it was a replica or like the actual no, one from no. the TV show. Was, I guess uh, the, from what he said is there were seven that uh -huh. they made. That is one of the seven. Wow. Yeah. And that thing was in like mint condition. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. He also has like Hank Williams Jr.'s first car, like. Ah. He has a bunch. I, I was still like en enamored at, at what was going on, but like everybody's also like like the guys are also drinking still heavily. Like, like uh -huh. <laughs> me, Travis, Tim, like uh, not the driver, obviously. Like, and 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 Kid Rock's just like, yeah, fucking have all the beers you want. But he has this beautiful, huge. It's a huge, uh, <coughs> like steel building, massive. It's got a full blown studio in it. Like the most beautiful recording studio I've ever seen. A bunch of offices. He's got like a, a whole wardrobe room and prop room and like a golf simulator upstairs. Does and then does Kid Rock really need a wardrobe? Because it's just like cut real, off but it's it's and just stuff, like right? uh, like from all the everything that you've ever seen in music videos. He had it all on mm. racks. And oh, shit like, like that, that like the mink coats and all that mm. other shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And That's he's dope. got dude. He's got all kinds of cool memorabilia in there. Like, Does he got anybody's you know, bones? Got, He's got, I, I don't know about anybody's bones, but he does have uh, a signed, th uh, like, like a note from Johnny Cash to him. Really? Yeah, it was cool. That's real cool. <laughs> Shit. And, uh, and then you go out, and he, he's super into pickleball. So he has a full pickleball court in there. What pickleball? the fuck is pickleball? Yeah, what's pickleball? I, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> but the other guys seemed to know, so I just shook my head and was like, "Oh yeah." Look yeah, up, pick pick, Dan. Look up pickleball real I quick. I think it's I'm the curious. one where you've got those curved, uh, those curved like launchers, like highlight. I don't know. Maybe, no, maybe it, it's, it would it's be. a it's a flat paddle, 
and it's okay. good. it's like mini tennis basically. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay. okay, I've seen those. Yeah, if he was in a highlight, I'd be like, wow, that's a weird hobby to take up. Yeah, that's mostly South and Central Americans, right? Yeah, and uh, Miami. It's big My- in Miami. But like, so he decorates all his shit. Cause I was like, it looks so cool in there. Like it looks, it looks similar themed, like a black rifle coffee shop, like Mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of rust, like steel and wood and things like that. And I was like, dude, the design in here is so cool. He's like, yeah, well that's what happens when you fire these fucking interior designers and just do it with yourself. And it was just cool as shit. Like if, if you just Detroit was an interior, that's what it looked like. (laughs) Well, I mean, look, if Detroit was an interior, uh, it would be on fire probably right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but it was just beautiful everything i didn't like i was trying to be cool and respectful so i didn't take any pictures or video other than us in front of the cars but it was super fun and he and he's fun as hell like i mean I tim bet, and travis man. were like can we can we jump off your deck into your lake he's like well fuck i don't care <laughs> that's amazing i've always wanted a fucking party with kid rock you know that beer is his own right he's got his own beer <laughs> Oh, what beer is it? Uh, fuck, man. It's, it's look up Kid Rock's beer. He's got a distribution deal with it. And um, I think it's slowly <laughs> rolling out into every state. It's called Badass Beer. That's it. Badass yeah. Beer. And uh, yeah, man, that guy just fucking lives Dude, life right. But he was so nice. So nice. And his, his girlfriend or fiance came out and hung out for a little bit. And, like, and he's like, man, I got to go to this charity event. And we're like, all right, we'll take off. So we leave. Yeah. Um, and then... Tim starts FaceTiming a country singer named Jake Owen. And he's like, yeah, what are you doing? He's like drinking beer at my bar. He's like, we're coming over. He goes, all right. <laughs> no shit. What a so weird we dr- day. We drive all the way out there. And again, it's, it's almost like, oh, by the way, like I know Tim and Tim and Bob have a history of like this. They're, they've been friends for a long time, but they both get super hammered and fight with each other a lot. Like they've wrestled like 12 times, like real wrestle. And he was he I'm not going to say it, but he was telling Michael when we were at his gate, he's like, yell this word. And I was like, come on, Tim, like you're drunk. Like, don't get us fucking kicked out of here before we're even in to the yeah. to the speaker box. And he's like, no, 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 just yell this word. And, and 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 you hear somebody come over the speaker box. Hello. And Tim just screams this word and he screams it back at him and the gate opens. <laughs> What's the? Are we allowed to know the word? No, no, no. Because okay. that's the password. It's their oh, trigger right, the word to start fighting. But, yeah, right, cool. but it was, but it was, it was, it was like calling somebody a name, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm thinking, like Tim, come on, just don't be a fucking, you know, don't get a. I know this is your buddy, but like, you know, I was, I didn't know that this was, this was the deal. So that was kind of a funny surprise. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I also, by the way, I, this didn't go unnoticed. I liked how you you name dropped and called him Bob. Wow, that's his know, real it name. Is, it is. It's kind of you know. It's kind of weird. You know, calling somebody Kid Rock or <laughs> Wee Man. <laughs> yeah. I, it, yeah. I, what, so how did you introduce yourself? Hi, Mister Rock. Like, what do you say? Uh, no, he he does it right away. He's like, Hey, man, I'm Bob. Okay, like, good. I, yeah. I, I, you always wonder where, where it's like, Hey, man, like like the Rock, right? But <laughs> you're gonna meet the Rock. Do you yeah, call him yeah. the Rock? No, you hey. say yeah. Rock, comma the. I or believe. Do you call him Dwayne? Like, what do you do with now? That you'll get a kick out of this because there's a there's a radio tower that that is kind of prominent on that you can see from his property. Uh-huh. And he's he's standing there and he's looking at Travis. He goes, you know what I would love, Travis? And Travis is like, what, what's that? And he's like, I'd love to walk out on my porch and see a giant Trump flag hanging from that tower. <laughs> And I'm like, dude. I go, you know, you know, that's the wrong person to t- to tell something like this to. And Travis is looking at the tower. He's like, yep. Yeah, oh yeah, that thing would be waving high. I because I've already seen those Trump 2020 flags. Those are already out, like uh, all over the the beaches. And did you and that see shit. that uh, somebody had Trump sign the uh, the misprint of Time magazine with Madam President? Oh, that's funny. Oh, my God. That's great. Yeah, that came out like three days ago. Did like you some, see? Uh, did you somebody see, uh, came up to him and was like, hey, would you sign this for me? And he signed it right on her face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> classic Trump. That's so great. I wonder how much that fucking thing's worth. Who knows? Yeah. They've been talking shit to each other again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jake, uh, Jake's house was fucking awesome. He, has, he had like a cool barn bar uh-huh. with like a 
a music stage and everything. And like, dude, it was just a cool setup. We had a, we had a couple drinks there. He had a, he had hired a chef cause it was his, uh, fiance's birthday that night. Mm -hmm. Um, and it turns out that the, the chef was a white devil. So like when I walked in, Dan, this dude was like, no fucking way. <laughs> and Jake's like, what the fuck? <laughs> white devil is one of the units in the 87. Yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of the f first of the 504. Yeah. It's not yeah. just, it's not a Quincy Orcha like from Ace Ventura when nature calls or anything. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, that's um, fucking yeah. crazy, dude. So then uh, Travis has to get to the airport. Tim is falling over. Like on top of me and uh, blackout we, drunk. Yeah, yeah, he's he's definitely done. So me and Jason, you know, we we kind of just were taking it easy. So we're like, we we still got to go out tonight. Um, so we have Tim get picked up at a Chili's uh, and take an Uber home. And me and Jason went back went back down into downtown Nashville uh, and ended up going out. And it was yeah, fun. That and place that's was fun. And then you had sex. What? No. No, yes, you did. Did you bang Jason no, Rowell? No, you, I did not. You like, said you, you had a, a few days with a little lady. Um, who was this lady? Where did you meet her? What's her and, name uh, and date of birth? Yes. What's her I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know what the name was. Okay. <laughs> well, the name's not important. Uh, let's get a picture up on the screen. Yep. Uh, let's pop a picture up. Uh, yeah, go ahead and throw the photo up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. That, that's fucking great, dude. Um, did, it, did it make you want to move to Nashville? No, no. I mean, I, I like where I live, I, but I'm definitely going to spend time in Nashville. Yeah. Because we got a lot done out there. In the short time that we were there, we, we did something that could be life-altering. Yes, you recorded some music, which is incredible, by the way. We did. And uh, have you heard the most recent version yet? I, I haven't. Uh, okay. you're, I, I well. can tell you this from the rough that Matt sent me. You're on the cusp of greatness. I got to hear the new, the new verses, though. When you, yes, we, we should have the rough master this afternoon with every part completed. But Matt, okay. did, Matt did sing the second verse with an accent yeah you're gonna be in tears okay, what, what good, accent good. what accent uh, a hardcore country accent country we, we, yeah, yeah we were this going, is a country song yeah we were going and over it, it the other night at like really funny midnight yeah it's uh, if he does what, it, what we were talking about it should be absolutely fucking legendary oh i just got back from his house and we were discussing the music video and we're like dude this is i i hope we get an ria award for this one is he gonna shoot it in nashville too Yes, we're going okay. back to Nashville. Great, great. Because um, we will be including quite a few of country celebrities in, in oh, this awesome. one. Because they all are talking about it. They're like, this song is so ridiculous, but it's so good. And that'll be the <laughs> November trip, right? Yes. Okay, great, yes. great. Fuck, that's going to be awesome. That'll Wait, be when, awesome. Is, yes, when in November? Uh, right we haven't. It's not locked. It's it's not, we've got to yeah. go to Bragg that. the second weekend or something. Uh, it? It's the 14th that we're yes. in Bragg. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, if these dates work out, it'll be awesome, and it'd be fucking rad to get Kid Rock on the show. Yeah, there you go. It'd be I think great. Have a blast. Charlie Sheen doesn't live there, right? He's still he's still in L.A. No, he lives in L.A. Okay, he, cool. He's trying to get out of L.A. though, isn't he? Everybody I think is so. Yeah. At this point. Uh, well, no, 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 no. He just moved to Malibu. Oh, okay. Good, yeah, good for him. Because he said he's from he was from Malibu. He wanted to go back. He's 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 having a good time living back there. But okay, good fun for guy, him. super right fun guy. All of those guys, everybody was fun. I didn't meet anybody that was that was dumb. Fuck yeah, uh, that's yeah. great. We uh, went to we went to a, a bar called Santa's. Huh? You remember remember that text I sent you? Ah, uh, yeah. It was like. You ever see Tim Montana sing Garth Brooks karaoke at yeah, one yeah, in the morning yeah. in a bar in a, in a double wide called Santa's? You can really get lost in some shithole bars in Nashville. <laughs> so I'm sorry, the bar was in a I, double wide trailer? Yes. Yes, it's a double wide trailer. Yep. It's beer only. There are three rules. You, no beer, no, no alcohol on the stage, no smoking on the stage, and no cursing in the microphone. I, the, I, the, I didn't know about the cursing thing. That's, That's really rough. funny. Yeah. But there, there, there is a lot of <laughs> shitty dive bars in Nashville where you can still smoke inside. And when you walk in, you're like, whoa, uh, oh, you can just smoke cigarettes in here. That's, <laughs> that's, people are still doing that. 
There, there is some Nashville bars where they just don't give a fuck. It was super fun. It's like, fucking we Nashville. Were, yeah. Santa's. Oh, uh, that's great. Uh, look, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole fucking All right. shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Your mattress is on the way, Jared. Uh, you got a ghost slacks, a king headed your way. So, so excited. Pop it up on your stories, by the way, and swipe up to, uh, to go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Where, as always, 36 month pay as you go program. Um, no interest, man. So it works out to like 38 bucks or something crazy. Uh, it's almost like fucking stealing. I can't believe they're doing that. By the no, way. They're, uh, they've lost their minds. Yes. So I didn't know it was only $38, though. Let's we, all I, benefit from it. Yeah, we've, been, we've had them on a, as a sponsor. For Let's like, all benefit. Exactly, from it. A ghost bed. From ghostbed.com. There's going to be drinking so bro. much cat puke fucking on those beds. Yeah. Goddamn right. A lot of hard years on that bed. A lot of hard years on that bed you coming know it. your you way. You know I'm not stopping. I'm just starting. Yeah, you are. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> if you're a military or first responder, you get 15% off everything in the store. Pillows, mattresses, sheets, you name it. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is bringing it to you. Um, God damn it, man. They, they've got a, a Halloween special and a Black Friday special Ooh. coming up that's going <laughs> to shock your dick holes <laughs> off. Uh, next up, we got Felix Gray. This is D'Anthony's company, by the way. Yeah, because you're you're in front of a computer all day. Uh, you wore these glasses and then they reached out and they're like, hey, man, let's fucking do it. Yeah, so, they saw us wearing the glasses on the show. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. Tell, tell the audience about uh, what it is. Well, I mean, look, they're they're glasses that are made to block the blue light filter out blue light. Yes. Which is what's on your phone, your fucking computer, your television, all this shit. Um, if you have like migraines or dizziness or any kind of weird shit from being on screens too long this will solve that problem yes and uh the the thing with it is because a lot of people wrote in they're like hey man is dan like becoming a hipster and i was like no actually it's it's from staring at a computer screen and they make these fucking glasses yeah it'll protect your eyes um look they're they come in like a million different shapes sizes colors and they're all fucking cool man i mean you can go to lens lens crafters and drop a fucking grande on him yeah. you can go to felixgray.com forward slash drinking bros and uh and get some of these glasses because look man they fucking help you've been wearing them for a very long time yeah um, they, in they real life they run those deals where you uh you can try them out for a month and send it back if it doesn't work yeah uh nice. which is awesome yeah again felixgray.com forward slash drinking bros free shipping uh, comes right to your it's house. It's actually it's FelixGreyGlasses.com. Oh, FelixGreyGlasses.com. Yeah. Ooh, sorry about that. Yeah. FelixGreyGlasses.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Again, FelixGreyGlasses.com forward slash Drinking Bros. You've been literally wearing these for months, um, and it's yeah. awesome that they reached out and, and they're now a sponsor. Well, the good thing about them is that most of these glasses have like a like a bright yellow tint. Yes, because the chemical compound that filters the blue light out is yellow naturally. Yep, they found a way to. Uh, I don't know what they did, uh, but they ground it up with the glass and then reformed it, and you can't see like it's you can see that it's completely clear now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, completely clear, and there there is no color to it. However, when you're looking at stuff, it blocks out the screen, and then also they also said for like an extra twenty bucks <laughs> if you, you know, if you need a uh, prescription on yeah, top yeah. of that, yep. like they'll they'll do that for you. So, yep. uh, go to FelixGreatGlasses.com forward slash Drinking Bros today. Next up, uh, Jared, this is the shit, by the way. The what? fucking shit. I don't think you have this yet, man. This KillCliffCBD.com? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had it. Dude, is that the best of all time? I know Rogan posted it, and we did too. And everybody hit us up, and they were like, dude, Rogan posted it. I want to go on record and say KillCliffCBD.com sent us the very first cans. We had those yeah. first. They um, sent us like a blank can. Drank them, and they were fucking amazing. And I said, look, these are going to sell out. And that's exactly what happened. They are back in stock. Uh, they've got fucking cases on cases on cases. I ordered eight cases when they came back. Yeah. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off at KillCliffCBD.com. Oh, yeah. That really gets some CBD drinks down God low. God damn it, yeah. doesn't it? Dude? So they got 25 yeah. milligrams in the can, um, no THC, so you're good yeah. to go. I think that knocks it down to under five bucks a can, too. And by the way, uh, I talked to those guys today, and there's some new shit coming out. Uh -huh. I can't, can't tell you yet, but it's this, this stuff is blowing up. Oh, yeah. I, there's, look, there's new stuff coming out soon. I knew I knew within I said, look, as soon as this goes live, 48 hours are going to be sold out. Yeah. So just be prepared. They were um, they got it back in stock. Killcliffcbd.com 
Promo code Drinking Bros gets you free shipping and 20% off. Shit's like four bucks a can. It's the same as like Monster, except you get CBD in it. Nobody's offering that. And then last but not least, Anthony, who do we got? Uh, let's see. Let's go with Roman ED. Roman. We, let's get your boners up, dude. You were taking oh, that on the cruise. Oh, man. You know what? So last night, I went to Air Force basic training to mm-hmm. speak to uh, to those guys out there that uh, were going through one of the uh, Air Force Special Warfare segregated uh, court classes. So, like, they put all those guys in one basic training flight. So I talked to them for about two hours, and when we went to questions, one of the dudes asked me, did you bring any Roman for us? <laughs> <laughs> you should have just pulled your dick out and said, well, I took it all before I, I got here. I took it all before I got here. Uh, GetRoman.com. Check out this hog. Forward slash drinking bros. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's... Uh, Check out this hog. <laughs> yeah, it, that should be their new slogan. <laughs> Check out I this know. hog. Let's ask them if we could do that. Uh, yeah, we can make we him a logo with a pig on it. Yeah, and it just says yeah. "Check out this hog." <laughs> <laughs> Check out this hog. It's like, yeah, it's a it's a hog with a bikini on it, just posing. Oh, Check out this hog. Check out this hog. <laughs> Go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. That'll get you free doctor's visit, free shipping, and uh, it's online. So the, the the doctor's visit is online. You don't have to go into a, your female doctor or your family practitioner and say, "Hey, doc." I'm a little problem with my bone. Can you help me? Uh, they're hey, not, duck. Yeah, they're not going to give you boner pills unless you admit to fucking having erectile dysfunction. By the way, if you're going to do that, that's the way to do it in that exact voice. Yeah. Hey, can you hey, help Doug, me with my, my bone? My dick don't work. My dick don't work. It's real floppy. I, I recommend it. Real floppy. You should really be taking these. Uh, forget about the doctors. You should be taking these recreationally. Yeah. We had a, Feels I don't, I don't, a little bit like a banana peel. It's real soft, my <laughs> ding dong. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if you guys remember this. My ding dong's broken. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember this, but you do you remember that uh, that dude who wrote into Drinker Bros his, and his wife was pissed off at him because he was fucking her too much? Yes, on the, on the Roman. Yeah. That's a true story, by the way. He was like, dude, after the fourth My round. My ding dong's pulling a Barbara Streisand. Oh, it's real saggy. My ding dong. Oh. Oh. It's like you have a permanent Beto dong. Oh, uh, if you look, if you got a Beto dong out hashtag, there, hashtag hashtag Beto dong. Yeah, hashtag Beto dong. If you got a Beto dong, go to fucking get Roman. Yeah, I heard. I heard, I heard to bang today. his wife. He has to. He has to. He has to build himself a dick splint. No, he fold, He folds it in half and puts one of her <laughs> one, one of her hair ties around it, and yep. he just slides it in. I like a dick <laughs> splint though a lot though. A just two little splint. popsicle sticks on the side Beto, of it. you and then fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I use shoehorns. Yeah, a nice that, little that way, if I need to make extra there. room in there, I can pry that bastard open. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I use a electric egg beater. You have to. Some, yeah. say, some say you have yeah. to. The only problem is the lips will get to. caught up in that stuff, and then it'll it'll fuck the engine up over time. Well, that's why you that's why you don't put both prongs on it, Dan. You put one prong, get it in. Yep. And then and then hit it. And that's true. Uh, that's, how, I, that's how you can get the walls clean. I'd I, like to take a, an egg beater <laughs> to my balls, like right when I'm about to, to ejaculate. You know, just have that uh, spin up. Right I would worry there. about it getting caught. Well, maybe just the vibration, though. The balls tighten up, though. The sack there's tightens something, up. There's something else that you can use that's less dangerous. Nah, I don't think it can. It's actually. a second woman, and it's her mouth. It's her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of a second woman in her mouth, dude, you and I were up late the other night having a weird conversation, and I want to share this I with the know. audience. I was like, man, are we allowed to say this to the audience? Are you guys, um, were you high, or what was the, give me, no, the, not at give all. me some context. No, I, I actually think we were sober, man. And I uh, just called him because I was thinking about it. Yeah, and it was so weird that I was like, holy shit. I didn't think about it. Uh, basically, what, what, what you were saying was, man, we live in a generation where everybody's texting and or sending nudes, right? Um, yeah, well, I mean, just texting and in, in, in constant contact in general with Facebook, Instagram, and iMessage. Mm-hmm. You have this contact. You have this contact. People aren't really changing their phone numbers anymore. No. Like, that's not a thing unless you get, like, a weird stock or something like that. Well, you that. and I have had the same phone numbers since we've known each other, and that's... yeah over a decade i've had the same phone phone number since 2003 i've had the same one since 98 i think i did I was until somebody school. leaked mine like a year ago man and i and i had to get a new one so so it's like things are only progressing in that direction we're the first generation that when we're like 
70 years old just mm-hmm. sitting on a couch retired like maybe our wife died already or something yeah we te- we can text any old fling that we want and yes. then what's even funnier is you've got nudes of her from 30 years prior what's even funnier than that is that we'll have grown up with hip-hop culture so we'll probably call her a trap queen oh yeah like I, I, <laughs> and it's true like our oldie station will be like Bitch you know, ho. yeah fucking straight out of compton <laughs> And you're like, oh, oh or do you think the classic? Do, do you remember how the LAPD used to beat be, up black people? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, well, or do you think all of that will be banned? Uh, who knows? You know, it's, it's funny you said that, man. I just had this conversation with Jesse, and I said yes. I, I think in 20, 25 years, they'll be banning movies, books, and, and music um, from that period of time. And they'll just be like, nah, it's too much, man. Um, because I get, I get emails a lot now that uh, Universal sold uh, Pool Boy to fucking Amazon Prime, and people are just discovering it for the first time. And they're like, Jesus Christ, dude, I don't know how you can make this today, or how did you make it then? And, and that's too, some of the shit was, you know, too racist or too whatever. And I was just like, eh, that was comedy. That, that is comedy. Um, yeah. But I would be surprised but if, that's they, the thing. if they don't like, start The culture now is like, like now, I, I wish somebody would just, Fucking pull the power from these guys when they're like, we dug up a tweet from 12 years ago. Exactly. Like 12 years ago, a majority of the population did not agree with gays. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. That was just the social norm. Like, OK, we progressed, but you can't hate on somebody for what they said. That was a social norm 12 years ago. Now, yeah, it's like half the, all, a lot of those people changed their mind. But if if you look at it, because here's the interesting part about it is if you look at it, the way they're tearing down like Civil War statues and uh, musicians and all of that shit, uh, that that woman they got rid of at the Islanders game, who's who sang, yeah. you know the uh, the anthem or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, more and mm-hmm. more, I, that's it's just going to come to the decades we were in. So by the time, yeah, we're in our seventies, half of this shit I think will be ripped away. <laughs> Um, or you'll have to bootleg it at some weird store. Well, you, you, won't, like, you don't have to rip it away. All you have to do is put pressure on the media conglomerates that publish it, right? Because somebody's going to own the rights to this, this music and, this, and these films, and if it's Netflix or whomever, they just don't post it anymore, then you can't get it. Right. Unless you have a, your own digital copy somewhere. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you look <clears> at uh, the Trump thing, for example, right? Uh, Mark Burnett owns all of the tapes from The Apprentice. Um, he owns all of the bloopers, the outtakes, the behind the scenes, the fucking sound yeah. files, all of it. And there was at one point a protest in Hollywood where they showed up at his office and they were like, we want the fucking tapes. We want everything in the vault. And he's like, no, you can go fuck yourself. Like that was a, sh- a TV show. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever people said off camera, whatever, uh, you know, because the grabbing by the pussy thing was an off camera thing that was supposed mm-hmm. to be left in the in the editing you know, floor, obviously it wasn't part of the show. Um, and they're saying, Oh, well, you know, Tom Arnold was the one who showed up with vice. Oh God. What he, a fucking idiot. He had his show called on vice called the Trump tapes. And he was convinced that they were all there and he kept showing up at Mark Burnett's offices. They told him to get fucked. Um, but you're, you're right, Dan, it's going to take somebody like that to do, to do that. But it's, um, that's, that's a passive way to do it. You don't have to have old school fucking fascist style book burning parties anymore. All you have to do is stop putting it on your channel. Yeah, like it's very passive and, and they'll say that it's because, well, we just didn't get enough interest in it. And because they own the analytics to it as well, you'll never be able to say yeah. what, what about yeah. that. Right. It'll just yeah. quietly disappear. I, exactly. So what Jared was talking about, which is crazy, dude, and we went down a huge rabbit hole that night was let's say your wife or husband dies. Right. Yep. You hit up one of your old flings that you used to date back in the day. Would you sit there? And go through their nudes in bed with them and, and masturbate to what they looked like back when they were 30 as opposed to like 70. Fuck yes. No. <laughs> so it's, <clears throat> could you do it? That's the thing. So this is what I said could to Jared. I? Sure, yeah. I'll do anything. I don't give a shit. But I just don't see the utility in doing that. I would like, I would be more prone because look, a woman of that age is going to be either set and doesn't want to do any weird shit anymore or she's bored now and wants to do all the weird shit right so i'm not going to sit around looking at fucking pictures with her i'm going to be inviting other people in and watching them rail her or 
suck my dick but, but or whatever it, the case right, is. But, it's, <laughs> it, but here's the point. And this, is, this is where it gets really fascinating because it's what Jared said. At 70, it's not going to be like it is now, right? You're not gonna. There's not gonna be a team of people that want to gangbang your your wife. No, dude. You can find other people in your age group to fuck anywhere you go forever. But that's not attractive, and that's what Jared attractive was saying. Attractive to whom? It's attractive to well, other no, people I mean, in their sixties. You're 60s probably and 70s. gonna be able to. You're probably gonna be able to pull up one of these pictures and like and and map their body in front of you. Yeah, like your, a hologram. With your little yeah yeah. And it's just like, oh look, we look like we used to, and then you just do it. Yeah, that'd be dope. Oh man, that'd be weird though. I mean, they're oh. already they're already kind of doing that. Yeah, but if you were lying next to your, if you were seventy, she was seventy, um, and then you know, I was seeing I was seeing her at thirty. Yeah, it, yeah. like, <laughs> are you are you having sex with her and looking at her thirty year old image? Yeah, why well, wouldn't I'd want her to look, just look at my? You're, you're missing image. you're missing a critical point of this though. With the advances recently in anti aging, uh -huh. HGH, uh, and reversal of cellular degeneration. Yep, we may be able to come into a stasis period with regard to aging as human beings by that point. So we may be able to even like literally the, the anti aging thing is nonsense. The phrase is nonsense. You age no matter what, but right, you can certainly defeat a lot of the effects of it, mm -hmm. and. You're talking about broadcasting a hologram over a 3D image. I'm talking about making her look like she's in her 30s again when she's 70. Oof. I, I, so here's, I, I think we're past that age, right? I think the next generation might, might have some shit like that. I think this age, probably not, but maybe the I next generation. I think we're more so going to go to the uh, uh, altered carbon style. Maybe, yeah, but that's I think, fine, I too. Think we're I, expl yeah, but, explain but that. I think it's a well, so, con consciousness oh. transference. Yeah. Basically. So altered carbon, you had a stack. Your stack essentially was your was your consciousness and your brain, and then your sleeve was a was was just a living organism body that was grown in 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 a. I mean, Japan and China are already doing this right now, like growing. You know, they just got approved to merge a, a human and animal. DNA yes, yes. So they're doing it with with, um, with a monkey. It's not. I mean, it's we're approved also, by China, but no one else. Obviously, we're close to <clears throat> downloading consciousness too. So I think I, I think that comes in the next <clears throat> twenty years, and I think altered carbon comes true in our lifetime. Yeah, we might. By the time we're seventy, we might be able to go plug our brain in, scan it, put it onto a drive, and then put us into a new body. Fuck, whose body is it then? Uh, whom, it's a grown body. It's it's whomever I want. Yeah, you choose. Like you get to make the body. Yeah, you okay. like. I want green eyes. I want to be thin. I want to be athletic. I want to be. You know, wow. Uh, give me I, another it, inch. Give me one more inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One more inch. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody on Earth is gonna be a fucking cyborg with a ten inch dick. Dude, yeah. once you yeah, once you completely map the human DNA system and are able to alter it and then grow it you're just i mean it's just plug and play at that point can you do that now what's the uh the dna uh shit they're doing with babies now uh crisper babies crisper yeah, yeah can yeah, you yeah. can you go into a crisper thing and be like hey i want my kid to have a big old dick you, you can't do dick yet you can do eye color you can do hair color you can do you know I, look there is a rumor that celebrities are selling their some of their genes and shit for well, like yeah that's dope they should hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars so like you know if you wanted a brad pitt baby you could have a brad pitt baby yeah but i also saw too like now their people are are selling their um the uh rights to their image for eternity yes yep so now you can say okay when i die you now own tom cruise and we have you know we have we have logged his voice. We've logged his body, his mm -hmm. expressions, his looks. We have three D models <laughs> of him. If we want him in movies, I've got to go to you and pay you to put him in a movie. Can you imagine if Tom Cruise was six three? No. No, I can't. That'd be too. It'd be too much Cruise. I think. Uh, I think. You think that'd be too much Cruise? I think it'd be too much Cruise. I think Cruise is 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 where he should he's be. He's five foot four. No, he's he's about five eight in real life. No, he's not. Yeah, he's not five. Five eight is a respectable a respectable size. Yeah, and he he carries himself bigger. So I might even say five ten. I might, I might even I might even bump it up. Um, Cruz carries he's looking himself it up right now. Yeah, he he carries himself like a real man, like a real hombre. 
I'm a big, I'm like a big a, cruise like fan. He's got, <laughs> he's got some machismo and some big old cojones. Yep, he's got a lot of hubris in those yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah. He's what, just got some arc in the dick. He's five seven. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's basically was, a that's basically a child. Nah, he's fine. <laughs> he's got enough. He's got enough juice to do whatever. He's got he wants. enough juice. Yeah. So so if you can do that and then transfer your consciousness, then essentially you could just live forever. Then right. Well, that's what that's the that's the whole thing in uh, in altered carbon was you had you had some people that were wealthy that are almost three hundred and fifty years old. Is that the Jonah? Is that the Jonah Hill thing? No, no, it's a Netflix original. Yeah, it's really that, good. He he was on this Netflix show, but I, and I forgot. Oh the no, name that of was it, a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it was with uh, Emma Stone, I believe. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what was that? They were wearing like futuristic suits. I I just imagine it was. It was. Something they like were that. doing psych. Right. They were doing testing of some kind of drug. Um, Jonah Hill. Fuck. I don't what is like the name anything of it? with Jonah Hill in it? He got. Th- he got. He got Maniac. Thin. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I did. I did like Wolf of Wall Street, but yeah, Wolf of Wall Street is probably the greatest movie of all time. It's a good one. Uh, I'm a big fan. Good By one. the way, see the Joker. Uh, the Joker you, is absolutely you liked it? fucking incredible. I just I have no desire. Here. I know it's, it's just, weird, man. It's I'm it's over one of the, all these movies. Man. I know. Here's the difference, though. It is not a comic book movie whatsoever. There is no CGI. There is nothing. Treat it like a two hour uh, drama, like a high stakes drama where you're just like, holy shit. Um, yeah, but it's just like I'm so bored <clears throat> of these characters. You won't be in this because it it's a different take on all of it where you're just like, oh, all right, cool, man. Like, you don't even see Bruce. You see Bruce Wayne for like five seconds or something uh, as a child or whatever. But uh, uh, it, it was lights out. He's probably going to win the Oscar. And speaking of the, the anti. You think. Yes. A hundred percent. This is a this is an Oscar movie. Yes. I, I think wow. I think it gets best picture. I don't know if it wins best picture, but it'll be nominated. And I think he wins best actor. It was a fucking two hours of just Joaquin Phoenix. Losing I mean, his shit, and it was amazing. Do you? Th- I mean, but Joaquin Phoenix is a white guy. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna have he's to gonna go back it. to white people eventually at the Oscars. He's gonna win an Oscar. Yes, I think he will for this, and I don't. I don't. There's, there's no way to stop him. Um, Everyone thought he was gonna win for her too, and he didn't win. Ah, I, I saw her. I, I thought he should have won for Walk the Line and Gladiator. Remember Gladiator? God damn, he was nominated. Oh, for he was such a fucking cunt in Gladiator. So yeah. good. Like, and if so you good. can play that much of a cunt, like yep. you're mm-hmm. fucking dope. Yeah. Did Walk you the, see his? What? Go Walk ahead. the line was great. Yeah, I was, was gonna good. say, did you Johnny see? Cash. Did you see that really fucking kind of low budget one that he did about like uh, underground reporting? Uh, yes. Was that? Yeah, yeah, was yeah. That, yeah. that was really fucking good. Uh, that was fucking really good. Yeah, man. Um, and then you know, look, he was nominated for the Master. The guy's been nominated for like ninety awards. He just doesn't give a shit about him. But uh, I think this one. I you, mean, there's no point to. I mean, I don't give a shit about him in, anymore either. Like once because they don't, they they no longer mean what they're supposed to. No, you know. And, and you're I right. Mean, that started. I, I think they that go started away. with Con. You know what? Now that now that we that we firsthand know that it's not about being the best, this justifies Kanye's behavior at the fucking uh, (laughs) now. Now I'm not upset with it. You know, and I I told you this before. Yeah, I used to be like, I fucking hate Kanye West. What a fucking conceited asshole to get up on stage and fucking and, and do that to Taylor Swift. But now it's like. He has a fucking point. He walks up there and goes, wait, so she sold more records, did more downloads, did this, did that, did that better than you, and you get the award. Why? Yeah. Well, look. Every, I, she every, won every category. She beat her out in every category. It's the same thing with the goddamn book. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what is the award then? Yeah. Con- like, Kanye gets a bad rap, and he has for a long time, but really, but he's, he's, he's probably just a normal dude. Because we're so That's used to celebrities, as fuck. yeah, we're yeah. so used to celebrities um, being buttoned up and hiding their real feelings about things because they wanted to be PC and all this other bullshit. And he just like, look, if he doesn't pa- give a fuck. If paparazzi was in my face, getting in my shit all the time, I would smack the fuck out of somebody. Absolutely, there's no yeah. question about that. If one of my friends were to, for example, write a best-selling book, yes. And for some reason, the New York Times <laughs> did not put it. Didn't number put one. them at number one. They put uh, two women ahead of them, just because. Yeah, because just because right. Because. Uh, then maybe I would use my rather large show to talk shit about them for the next six months. Yeah, 
and be yeah. a dick about it. Well, that's what yeah. we're doing in real life. That's yeah. what he, he's a real life guy. That's what he's com- just doing yeah. real life shit. Yeah. But I see. But, but I mean, I, I see his frustration now. Like when when you don't have context and, and the American public didn't have context of this is such a conceited celebrity thing to do. Dude, he had had it. And, it, and you know what? The balls to fucking, you know, you know what? I'm going to take this microphone right now and I'm going to say my piece because this is bullshit. Yeah. Like that's that's fucking that's commendable. Yeah. Yeah. Looking like, back, looking back at it now, you know, with uh, with all the hindsight we have. And, and yes, what what bullshit awards have become now. It's yeah, not, he was it's not about right. it's not about numbers. It's not about being the best. It's not about did you did you outperform everything else? No, yeah. no. It's about we're just gonna pick the one we want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then say that. Hey, like if you're an artist this and performer, is not, you're, you're yeah. trying to reach a goal, right? Like we feel like we do all this marketing and stuff, and we reach X number of downloads or sales or whatever the case mm-hmm. is, then we're good. We're number one. Right. That's the goal. Yeah, and you hit that goal, and you double that goal, triple it. Yeah, and then they're like, "Ah, nah, sorry, suck our dicks." Yeah, Yeah. but to me, because it it works like every other industry should work. Of like, hey man, you you try to be the best, you try to get the best sales or the best thing or whatever. Art is subjective, obviously, with music videos and movies and all of that shit. So, yeah, they can kind of do what they want, but the the people at home know what's real and what's not real. Um, oh, dude, this happened. This happened to a couple of my friends in the Air Force a while back ago. They both went to U.S. Army Sniper School as Air Force guys. Mm-hmm. They both they both <laughs> achieved Top Gun, which were was you know it was like honor grad. So it you is know, real, right? Great. Well, the Army gave you know gave two Air Force guys Top Gun based on their scores, based on what they did. Then they went on a follow-on sniper course put on by the Air Force, which is primarily the Air Force cops, and these are two tack piece. They both outperformed everybody in the course, and they told them, oh, we're not doing the award this time. Man. <laughs> no shit. So what do you, yeah, what'd you, what'd you, just, what'd you get, a, a firm handshake? It's people, yeah, it's just people in that position <laughs> abusing their power and being egomaniacs and being pieces of shit. Like... Fuck. So you don't you yeah. don't you don't get a plaque or anything like that anymore? It's the same well, I mean, as you it's got the a same graduation as, certificate. But it's they, the I same mean that's as, just the principle. Yeah. Oh, we're not doing the top gun award on this class. It's what? the same as badge Fuck. protectors at like fucking badge schools in the in the yes. military in general. Like when I was doing my uh expert infantry badge, one of the stations that you have to do is you have to call on an airstrike or you can call it an indirect fire. And uh, the guy's like I did it all perfectly. Exactly Every every fucking thing was like spot. I had memorized it. You know how my brain works. Sure. I just went through it immediately. And he was like, well, you didn't pick up the hand mic on the table there. And I'm like, this hand mic that's not attached to anything? <laughs> He's like, yeah. So I picked it. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I was a private at the time. I picked it up and held it to my ear and stared at him in his eyes and said the whole thing over again. Like, get fucked, dude. So what happens after that? After that, I got an expert infantry badge. Really? Yeah. That's funny, man. But Fuck still, yeah. that's yeah, but fucking you know stupid. What? Dude, people people want to inject their their peace in everything instead of like leaving something alone and being like, all right, you met the criteria. You're good. It's like I need to speak to feel like I'm worth something. Well, I need to add something in. It's like, yeah, I mean, I I, actually I got it around. Yeah. I mean, I even got on some of our own people because it was like. They would come back, oh, uh, here are my changes, and here are my notes, and here are my notes. Okay, none of this makes the piece any better, and you can't justify that. I'm not changing it. Like, because you don't even know. You're just writing shit down to make it look like you work. Yeah, (laughs) but that's, you know, 95% of people, I guess, throughout the day. Um, By the way, I saw that, that photo of you teaching class. Is that weird going back and doing that? No, nah, it was fun. It took me a minute to kind of get back in that mode, like I had to get out of this mode of we can say and do whatever we want. And oh, um, I'm on a military base talking to to young Air Force guys. So, uh, you know, I had to I had to kind of gather a clear message for them. But they had a lot of really good questions. So I was uh, look- impressed with. But let me let me ask you this, because everybody knows you and knows all of the things that that you guys do. Uh, Was that weird afterwards that they come up and be like, hey, man, we listen to this or we love Black Rifle Coffee or. 
No, I mean, I, it's just that that age group is is such such a gap, though. These, you know, these guys are are, are sixteen <laughs> years younger than me. Yeah, but and that's so what it's I, like that's what I wonder. Like, does it does it yeah. carry over like your sketches and the coffee and all that stuff? Yeah, like, yeah. The, it does. I mean, there was a lot of people that listened to our show. There was a, a good portion, and then. You know, the other half was like, wait, there's a show that we're missing out on. Oh, man, you got to tell me about this. That's awesome. Yeah, we, uh, we because, really need to start geofencing all the military bases so, with that. So here's the thing. They've been locked in there for two months. So <laughs> the first question I got was, hey, what guests uh, have you guys had on Drinking Bros mm-hmm. that 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 we wouldn't know about. And I was like, Oh, so you guys don't know. We got Alex Jones and the whole room goes, what? No way. <laughs> yeah. So they've been out 60 days. So they didn't know about some of the, what stuff phase are they in? Where, where are they? No, they're, that's basic training. They're graduating. Oh, they're Friday. in basic training. I see. So, yeah, that's fucking rad, man. Uh, that's yeah. really funny. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. You, you don't know anything about the show. And then all of a sudden you pop on that Alex Jones episode and that's your welcome to drinking <laughs> bros. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the drinking bro of the week, shall we? Um, this one's going to go out to a good buddy of ours, actually. Um, this one's going out to Dakota Meyer. Uh, last night, and look, we talk about other shows like, you know, Joe Rogan a lot because we're fans. And I I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, us being fans of other podcasts, being a big podcast. Not at all. I love him. We love him. We love Joe Rogan. I love Dakota show. Yeah, so do I. And it was surreal to see Dakota Meyer on Joe Rogan last night. So and I was cool. like, holy shit. And it's a great, great fucking episode. Yeah, so nice. if you get a chance to check out <laughs> Dakota Meyer on uh, Joe Rogan, I highly recommend it. The other thing, man, that I was super amped about was when it, you know, I, look, I subscribed to him, obviously. So when it popped up on my phone last night, um, I was able to, to look it up. And I was like, oh, my God, it's, it's fucking Dakota, right? And... I, instead of listening to it on the phone, I just popped it up on YouTube on the TV and watched it, man. And that was just a fucking awesome two hours, dude. Um, That's so cool. It was yeah. really good. Actually, uh, someone approached me in the apartment complex and saw me wearing the black rifle hoodie uh-huh. this morning. I was walking my dogs around. They're like, oh, do you like that coffee? I'm like, yeah, here's the story. Blah, blah, blah. I just gave her the details. Yeah. And she's like, uh, oh, yeah, listen, uh, to rogan is your show anything like that i'm like no but actually our buddy was just on yesterday yeah and she goes oh dakota i'm like yeah and she was like oh my god that's the best episode he's ever done i know hey, a lot rogan. Of, dude like, a every, lot of people really? said that oh yeah, yeah. um because like look, it really hit home for a lot of people he says a lot of very poignant things as dakota's want to do he says a lot of poignant he's a good speaker so he's a great public speaker <clears throat> and he, he goes around the nation all the time we're going to have him on the show at some point it's one of those yep. things where we've been no, he just lives down the road from me yeah. i know it's one of those things where we've been buddies with him for so long you, you always forget that you're like oh man he's got one of you know the craziest uh lives yeah. of all time yep. and we we'll get him on the show eventually it wasn't it's not anything intentional obviously uh dude it's just a friend where you're just like oh yeah fuck your life is amazing like <laughs> yeah. we should really sit down and <laughs> chat about it and so again when he popped up on on rogan i was like oh my god holy shit I, uh, yeah it was awesome to see so shout out to uh to dakota meyer man and if uh, if you're out there and you have not seen or heard it uh go to go to joe rogan experience and uh check it out it's a fantastic episode it is that great. is awesome i yeah, was so man. excited to see that same next is matt and I hope so, right? Um, yeah, we'll see. It, it's got to go down, I would imagine, right? At this point? I, yeah, hopefully. I, I feel like every picture between Rogan and Evan and Matt and everybody at this point involves everybody we've hung out with. It's, <laughs> like, it's Matt's turn. We've got to get Matt on the show. That'll so, be a good one. Yeah, ho- hopefully that, that shakes out. Um, fun episode. Start taking nudes. A lot of them of your yeah. uh, girlfriends. You're going to need them when you're older. You're and timestamp those, too. Put the date on there so you know exactly when it was. Exactly. Or, look, your iPhone keeps those dates. You're fine and take that. And take portrait mode nudes. That way it has the data to 3D wrap. Yep. Oh, man. Just in case you want to put that nude on your car at some point. Yeah. N- or <laughs> on a blank Android body. Could you imagine exactly. wrapping a nude of your ex-girlfriend or, like in your car? <laughs> that would be the ultimate <laughs> fuck you. And then you pull up at her new boyfriend's house and, and you're in your wrapped car, completely <laughs> nude of her. And you're like, 
Oh hey. my god! It's just on the hood, and you hey, get up, up on the hood and start fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I heard you're dating Stacy. Yeah. Guess what? Here she is on a <laughs> Ford Fiesta. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, for Jared oh, Taylor, god. Anthony, Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.